Okay, so we're back with part two. Part two mainly because I was going to do this all in one hit, but uh, my my laptop's playing up a little bit, so look, we'll just wear it and keep going. So, uh, VFR in icy conditions. Uh, they have some restrictions and we're expected to know them. So, under car 91315, operating in snow and ice conditions, Simply enough, no pilot in command of an aircraft shall perform a takeoff under VFR in an aircraft that has snow, ice, or frost adhering to the wings, stabilizers, or control services. Ultimately, because you will drop out the sky because you don't have the airflow you need to be able to survive. So, if you see any snow, ice, or frost adhering to the wing services, stabilizers, or control services, ailerons, rudder, or elevation, you must not take off. You have to de-ice first. Oh, now we're not moving. Oh, there we go. Sorry. We're catching up. There we go. Right. Uh, and we're also need to be able to state the restrictions applicable to operating an aircraft in aerobatic flight for those who are that adventurous. And under car 91, 701 covers aerobatic flight, and it says that A, except as provided in paragraph E, a pilot in command must not operate an aircraft in aerobatic flight, one over an area that is within a horizontal distance of 600 meters of a congested area, or of a city, town, or settlement. That 600 meters ring a bell? Good. Uh, two, over an area that is within a horizontal distance of 600 metres of an open air assembly or persons. And three, within any controlled airspace except with the explicit authorisation of ATC. B, except as provided in paragraph C and F, a pilot in command must not operate an aircraft in aerobatic flight below a height of 3,000 feet above the surface. C, a pilot in command may operate an aircraft in aerobatic flight below a height of 3,000 feet above the surface, but not less than 1,500 feet above the surface if the pilot holds an aerobatic rating issued in accordance with Part 61, and below a height of 1,500 feet above the surface if the pilot, one, holds an aerobatic rating issued in accordance with 61, Two, does not perform aerobatic flight below the height authorised in their aerobatic rating. And three, is participating in an aviation event. D, a pilot in command must not operate an aircraft in aerobatic flights carrying a passenger unless, one, the pilot holds an aerobatic rating issued in accordance with Part 61, and two, the flight is conducted at a height not less than 3,000 feet above the surface. So, you can carry a passenger and perform aerobatic operations as long as you're doing it above 3,000 feet and in accordance with your Part 61 and ratings. E, a pilot and commander may operate an aircraft in aerobatic flight over an area that is within a horizontal distance of 600 meters of spectators at an aviation event if the pilot is participating in that aviation event in accordance with Rule 91703, which we will get to. If a pilot or glider, a pilot of a glider, may operate a glider in aerobatic flight below the height of 3,000 feet above the surface without holding an aerobatic rating issued in accordance with Part 61, if the aerobatic flight is for the purpose of spin training, and two, the flight is conducted at a height not less than 1,000 feet above the surface. Meaning, you must carry out aerobatics within 600 metres horizontally from a city... Oh, sorry, you must not carry out aerobatics within 600 metres horizontally from a city town settlement or over an open air assembly of people, except if you are participating in an aviation event. To do aerobatics in controlled airspace, you must receive ATC's clearance. The minimum height for aerobatics is 3,000 feet if you do not have an aerobatic rating, or you hold an aerobatic rating and are carrying passengers. 
If you hold an aerobatic rating and no passengers are on board, you can do aerobatics down to 1,500 feet. You can perform aerobatics below 1,500 feet if you hold an aerobatic rating. Do not go below the height authorised in your aerobatics rating and are in an aviation event. 432.26 expects us to state the restrictions applicable to parachute drop operations under car 91. And 91705 carries the parachute drop operations stuff. And it says, A, a pilot in command of an aircraft performing a parachute drop operation must hold a parachute drop rating issued by the director under the Act and Part 61. B, an operator of an aircraft performing a parachute drop operation must ensure the following. 1. The aircraft is used to perform the operation as a valid standard category airworthy certificate and the configuration of the aircraft is appropriate for the parachute drop operation and the aircraft has adequate interior room and satisfactory egress from the, for each parachutist to be carried and the aircraft cabin has no handles or fittings which could cause the inadvertent opening of a parachute in the aircraft or during egress by the parachutist. And suitable points on the aircraft are used for the attachment of static lines. And the aircraft flight manual authorises flight with a door removed or open in flight. Oh, and there's more. C. A pilot in command of an aircraft performing a parachute drop operation must ensure that each person carried in the aircraft other than a person intended to make a parachute descent one occupies a seat and fastens his or her safety belt during takeoff and landing and wears an emergency or reserve parachute assembly and is trained in the use of the emergency or reserve parachute assembly and is briefed on the general procedures to uh, to be followed in an aircraft emergency including the method to be used for exiting the aircraft and two each person carried in the aircraft who intends to make a parachute descent one is not in a position in the aircraft that could hazard the safety of the operation of that aircraft's occupants through inadvertent interference with the controls and is briefed on the general procedures to be followed in an aircraft emergency including the method to be used for egress of that aircraft D. A pilot in command of the aircraft performing a parachute drop operation must not permit a person to make a parachute descent from the aircraft unless the person or persons making the descent have provided the pilot with the details of the proposed descent prior to takeoff. The pilot is satisfied that each person's descent is A. Authorised by the parachute organisation. 2. Authorised by a holder of an Adventure Aviation Operator Certificate issued by the Director under the Act and Part 115 if the certificate authorises tandem parachute operations or is just generally approved by the Director. He's a busy man, that Director. Now what that means is to perform parachute drop operations you must have a parachute drop rating. The aircraft must have a valid standard category of airworthiness certificate an appropriate configuration for the parachute drop operation, have enough room for each parachutist as well as no handles or fittings that may cause the parachute to open accidentally inside the aircraft. The aircraft flight manual authorises the flight with the door removed or open in flight. The PIC must ensure that anyone on board not parachuting is seated and wearing a seatbelt for takeoff and landings wears and knows how to use an emergency or reserve parachute and has been briefed on the emergency procedures. And anyone that is parachuting will not accidentally interfere with the controls and are briefed for the emergency procedures. The pilot in command must be briefed on the parachutist's planned descent prior to takeoff and be satisfied that the parachute drop is authorised by the parachute organisation an adventure aviation operator or the director. We also need to be able to state the restrictions applicable to an aircraft towing gliders under car 91 and 91709 is all about that. A person must not tow a glider in flight unless that person holds a glider tow rating issued under part 61. 
A person must not, must not tow a glider in flight unless, one, the aircraft is used for towing, is operated at airspeeds below the maximum airspeed specified for the aero tow in the glider flight manual, two, the towing load does not exceed the maximum load specified in the aircraft flight manual, and three, the person has checked the operation of the tow hook of the aircraft to be used for before the flight, and four, the person uses the takeoff, glider release, airspeed, and emergency signals established by a glider organization for the pilots of tow aircraft and gliders. And five, the takeoff distance to clear a 50 foot obstacle with the glider in tow does not exceed 85% of the takeoff runway available. And six, the aircraft is capable of maintaining a rate of climb of at least 200 feet per minute at 1,000 feet above the aerodrome with the glider in tow. Something tells me those numbers are important. C. A person must not operate an aircraft to tow a glider in flight unless, one, the aircraft to be used is equipped with a tow hook and attachment assembly, a pilot activated quick release capable of releasing the tow line from the tow hook with the glider in tow and while the tow aircraft is in flight. Two, the tow line to be used meets the requirements of Appendix A26. Feel free to look that up. Three, if more than one glider is being towed, the tow lines to be used are one for each glider and of a length that provides a distance of not less than 50 meters between any glider and the towing aircraft and of a length that provides a trailing separation of not less than 30 meters between each glider and attached by a single tow ring to the aircraft and capable of separation on release from that aircraft. D. Paragraphs A, B and C do not apply to towing of hang gliders in flight. Now what that means is, to perform glider towing operations, you must have a glider tow rating. The pilot in command must ensure that the airspeed of the aircraft towing remains below the maximum airspeed of the aero tow in the glider's flight manual. The towing load does not exceed the maximum load in an aircraft flight manual. The tow hook operation is checked prior to flight. Takeoff, glider release, airspeed, and emergency signals are established by the gliding organization. Takeoff distance to above 50 feet must not exceed 85% of the takeoff runway available, Tora, with the glider in tow. The aircraft must be able to maintain a rate of climb of at least 2,000 feet per minute at 1,000 feet above the aerodrome while towing the glider. The aircraft must be equipped with a tow hook, an attachment, and pilot-activated quick release. If towing more than one glider at the same time, because you're just good like that, they must have their own tow lines, and distance more than 50 metres between the gliders and the tow aircraft, and a distance more than 30 metres between each glider. Attached to the aircraft by one tow ring which enables separation from that aircraft. That's the towing bit. And lastly for this little bit, we are expected to state the restrictions applicable to an aircraft towing objects other than gliders under car 91. And that's covered in 91-711, towing objects other than gliders. They really do come up with some great names for these. A. No pilot shall tow an object other than a glider in flight unless 1. They hold a private pilot license and a tow rating issued under Part 61 or a commercial pilot's license issued under Part 61 or an airline transport pilot license issued under Part 61 and the aircraft is equipped with a tow hook and attachment assembly which has a quick release mechanism and has a positive rate of climb at altitude to be operated. B. No pilot operating an aircraft that is towing an object other than a glider shall carry passengers. You cannot tow and carry passengers at the same time. That is not just for gliders, that is for towing banners and any other form of operational towing that's considered. So you just don't carry passengers when you're doing that stuff. You've got enough on your plate. So, if towing an object other than a glider, you only need a tow rating if you hold a PPL. 
CPL and ATPL pilots are not required to hold the tail rating because they are all-knowing and godlike omnipotent beings. The aircraft must have a tow hook with a quick release and the aircraft must be able to maintain a positive rate of climb at all altitudes you intend on flying. And once more time, you must not carry passengers while towing objects that are not gliders. Okay. Keep reading and we'll keep going. <laughs>